I love for you, man. You know what, I'm what are we talking about? You know, I'm not here to start any trouble. I'm only going to say nice things about you from now on. I think you're handsome, and I think you're a wonderful host. I'm fat and I'm overweight. Just don't say anything silly. I was waiting for you to say that. I'm not laughing about it. You think this is funny? I take it serious. You know, I don't want y'all to take anything that, out of context that I'm saying. He's very funny. He likes to joke around a lot. As a personality and as an entertainer, yes. This is going to be really quick. I'm not taking any questions. Go ahead and get comfortable. I'm going to talk for a little bit. You're listening to Cabby Presents, the podcast. Welcome, 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 welcome to the show. I'm your host, Cabby Richards. Thank you for checking in, and thanks to all those reminders to be more frequent with the podcast. I'm working on it. Uh, you know, on the Cabby Presents podcast, you get a variety of guests talking about sports and pop culture. One of my favorite topics is food. Fat guys love food. If you take a look at my Instagram feed, which is at the real cabby, you know I'm a huge foodie. I'm the annoying friend that takes pics of his meal before eating, like getting that low angle. It's got to be close up, without the flash. I move the plate around to get the best lighting. I'm that guy. So today, I invited my favorite chef to the podcast to have a conversation about his life feeding our bellies and our souls. He joins me in the studio right now. If it's going to be uh, an interview, I'm going to conduct it. So I'll answer my own questions, ask myself the questions, then give y'all the answers. The first time I met this man, I experienced a master class in life. The wisdom that flowed effortlessly from Rob Rainford's mouth to my ears was as plentiful as a Thanksgiving dinner for an entire church. There weren't lessons in cuisine from the famous chef, but there were life lessons about ways to conduct oneself and little nuggets about working in television. I mean, I didn't listen to the dude, but he gave me some nuggets, some gifts. See, Rob Rainford has been a star on television in North America for the better part of two decades, and as a favor... He came in to have this conversation on the Cabby Presents podcast. Good day to you, sir. Thank you, Cabby, for having me, brother. I really appreciate this. Okay, on Twitter, it's uh, Chef Rob Rainford. That's uh, C-H-E-F-R-O-B-R-A-I-N-F-O-R-D. And on Instagram, where he posts his delicious meals, it's at under, sorry, it's at Chef underscore Rainford. There you go. Okay. You got it all, brother. Oh, man. So, um... Who um who does the dishes at your house? My wife. Your wife does the dishes? My wife, yeah. That's our arrangement. I cook, she cleans. <laughs> How did you, I mean, I know you make masterpieces. Or actually, do you? Because I've heard that chefs, like, they're, they're cooking up these, these culinary treats at the restaurants. And they're, you know, they're, you guys are there for 12, 14, 16 hours a day. And then when you come home, you eat, like, like chips. Yeah. cereal yeah. like yeah. you guys get takeout like you you're not exerting the same energy in the home as you are at your job no not for myself per se but you know when i do cook for the family it is always a five star treat i you know <laughs> what I, I love them to death and that's that's the best and that's all i can do for them right now it's just make is just make delicious make, meals make delicious meals have make sure that everybody's got an a la carte uh, part to what they want and i just give it to them okay but rob when you come home on a random like a random Tuesday night, are you making it like? But you and if you come home at like nine, no, no, we but we I cook a lot on the weekends and I will freeze a lot of stuff so that the kids can pull out what they need during the week. Ah. Uh, you know, we play around and yes, there are uh, quite a few takeout containers in my garbage. <laughs> if you were to go through my garbage, I might be exposed. Um, what? So what is your like? What's your guilty? What's your like go-to takeout? Meal, because it's interesting because there there's a certain perception of ch chefs. You guys have the the coat like your your lab coat, but you have your name on it, and you know you have these pristine kitchens with like you know dozens of workers, and it's just a whole like assembly line making. But then what is what is your takeout food of choice? Uh, you you know, never see the opposite. The, it's like well, the guilty pleasure would be Albert's. You know, I you know, <laughs> I, you know and, and and Albert and I are really good friends, so you know I do go up and uh, he takes care of me when I'm there. Albert's, for those who don't know, Albert's is a Jamaican food uh, restaurant. Yeah, uh, local, Vaughn. A local, Vaughn in, in uh, St. Clair. Yeah. yeah, a local spot here in Toronto. 
Oh, so you, you just go back to the roots. Yeah, you know what? I crave, and especially this time of the year, it's comfort food for me. I, I have to just, you know, we just came back from Jamaica, my family and I. And uh, How long were we there for? We were just down, down for seven days over the new year. And, uh, you know, it was, you know, just being back home was great. But when I'm here, I, I just miss it. I, I need to have that food. And sometimes, you know, that kind of food takes time to cook. Right. So you don't have an opportunity. When I'm cooking at work, I'm doing sort of classical French. I'm doing barbecue. I'm doing all these other things outside of really what I truly in my indigenous heart say, you know, I, I just, <laughs> could I just get an oxtail and, or could I get some curry goat? You know what I mean? <laughs> I, we all crave. So you, uh, you mentioned uh, the French cuisine and barbecue. Are those those cuisines found at your restaurant at Gossip? Yes, they are. They are definitely found down there. So what, you guys do French and barbecue? Well, barbecue to a sense that, you know, I, I hate using the word barbecue because Why? barbecue invokes, you know, yes. a, a, a connotation of just uh, down south and maybe the American south. Uh, you know, I'm more of a griller, and I, it's always been used as sort of an adage that, oh, you're not truly a barbecue guy. But what I do is I have a smoker. It's a three-tiered, uh, you know, pot-bellied smoker at work and I play with this baby all the time so there are always a, there's a smoking element uh, there's either a grilling element but there's some part of that that I incorporate into my French cuisine okay Bar barbecue invokes to me just like it's it's, uh, it's a it's a piece of meat or several pieces of meat lathered in barbecue sauce Rips. it's it's rich in flavor <laughs> yeah. I mean some of it could be hot and it's gonna be, it's gonna leave your fingers kind of red. Yeah, I know you. You're not gonna. You're gonna use a fork and knife at my place. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> you're good. But I have a beautiful smoked lamb shank on my menu, which I have a hoisin barbecue sauce with, which is actually basted on, so it's actually sticking to the actual lamb shank itself. Served with grilled potatoes, grilled uh, asparagus, grilled uh, carrot, baby carrots, and a hoisin barbecue sauce. But it's matched with a veal jus and lamb jus and a hoisin barbecue sauce. I don't, I don't even know what That's uh, okay, I know. That veal, it, veal jus, is that like a, it's a, it's a sauce? A, it's a sauce, yeah, it's a sauce. And but I, it? I always make it, it has that French element. That's why, I, <laughs> that's why I keep telling you that it's, you know, when people ask me to be very specific, I can't be very specific. I just try to use the technical training that I got from George Brown College that I've invoked my whole career, and I still use that today. Now at at Gossip is uh it's on where where is that in Toronto? We're at 50 Prince Edward Island Crescent down on the CNE grounds behind the band shell. So we're to the right of Liberty Grand and we're right behind Music uh, Nightclub. Uh, if you're down there, Better Living Building. Okay. We're, we're really we're there's a nestled little community down there. So if you're there during the summer, wherever the Chin Picnic is, we are right behind. We hold all of the VIPs there every year. Uh, Air Show, Carabana. We're packed. We're okay. packed. So we're a location that if you don't know about us come down and check us out. all right so that's gossip restaurant real quick if i go to okay if i go to a a random restaurant and maybe it's called i don't know it's called abc restaurant sure and i buy a 25 dollar steak on the menu and it's like a 14 ounce steak let's say it's a big piece of meat that's a lot for that kind of price <laughs> okay fine say fine it's, it's 20 bucks then say, eight, no. eight ounces is going to cost you 35 to 45 dollars if it's of quality Oh my, okay, fine, let me, okay, so let me go 50, okay, if it's a $50 steak, sure. right? Okay. $50 steak, how much of that, okay, break it down to me in, like, in, in the dollar amount, how much of that 50 bucks is going to the chef, how much of that 50 bucks is going to the owner, and how much of that 50 bucks is paying for the meat? Well, listen, we work on 30% margins in most restaurants. So okay. if you just use that matrix, uh, you've got to pay for labor. You've got to pay for lights. You've got to pay for all that stuff. So, you know, out of a $30 or $50 steak, you know, half of it's going to the food cost. Really? Yeah, yeah. Because you know what? You're not coming. To 25 it. bucks for like a, you're a not coming, raw, you're piece not, of raw steak? <laughs> You're okay. not, well, you have to cook it. It takes heat to cook that yeah, steak. Yeah, I know it takes heat to cook <laughs> and that. And it takes expertise to cook that steak. So I can't just <laughs> hire a bunch of nobodies to come and say, let's screw up Cabby's meal, right? You want to come down. If you want it well done, then I have to give it to you well done. If you want it medium rare, I've got to give it to you medium rare. I can't give it to you in between the way I like it. I have to give it to, give it to you the way you like it. So all of that 
the matrix I told you, 30% is food cost and most of the margins that we're working on. It's not a lot. It's not a lot. we got to work on volume. So it's not a, it's not an easy business to be in. You so know? is the margin the markup? Is that, is that what the margin means? Part of it's markup, but part of it's also using the matrix, a, a proper matrix, because the vegetables cost money, the sauce costs money, the meat costs money, the plate costs money, you know, my time costs money. So right. all of that goes into the matrix. You still, you still kind of you dodged it. You didn't I tell me how you, you dodged it. I'm not gonna. I'm not. Listen. Why <laughs> am I gonna give away? Yeah. I, I want to know how much I'm paying. If it's if, if I'm paying the chef, you're, you're, fifteen <laughs> bucks. Okay. If I'm paying the owner, fifteen bucks. Yes. And if I'm paying for the food costs and the, the cost of running the business, twenty bucks. Now I understand in my brain a no, little bit more. I don't more. want you. To, I don't want you to know. Okay. Because you can go. You can go to that other place where you no. can drive right through and listen. They, listen they'll Rob. throw your meal right at you, brother. And they'll screw that one up for you too. All right. Rob, we're talking about ABC restaurant. We're I not talking ABC. about. I didn't say anything. I just told you. Man, drive through it, man. Just you check it out. Is this is it sacrilegious that I like well done steaks? Yes, but you are um, a Negro. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, my, I like my food cooked. Why? Though. Why? Because I I like you know it's I, and I often order medium well because I don't want to seem like too oh, much no, of a barbarian. We know who you are. <laughs> we know you. We know anyone who orders medium well wants it well done. <laughs> Uh, but we we know we know who you are. Uh, Wait, but why do I want pink meat? Hey, I want pink meat. I mean, if, I, if my chicken is pink inside, I'm gonna get sick. Well, that's because of salmonella. There right. are inherent airborne and foodborne illnesses that are in certain meats, vegetables, everything. Okay. So you've got to wash your spinach. Okay. Fine, All right. Yeah, so fine. if you don't wash it, you can you my can have E. coli. My not gonna be is pink, right? Oh yeah, but if you don't wash your spinach, you could get a coli. Okay. Uh, fine, and yeah. there you go. That that can cause a lot of da a damage. Now here. This piece of meat <laughs> I like already died. I like died. you say we know who you are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, know, order comes yeah. in. I'm pointing right at you. Uh, <laughs> we know that meat already died once for you. Why does it need to die twice? What do you? Why what? don't you want to taste the actual quality of the meat? Like if you're eating, uh, let's just say ABC grocery chain. Okay. And you and it's under cellophane and you don't know where it's come from. Okay, you might, you might want to cook that to well done. I'm not 100 percent sure, but I know that in Canada we've got a great supply. We haven't had any of those breakouts that a lot of the other countries have had yeah, because Europeans we are we are very cow, very diligent stuff. on the way that we produce, raise, and if it's Canadian made, you can feel pretty safe. Rob, I don't want to eat pink meat though. Yeah, dude. you should try it. What? No, I've had it before and I don't like it. I'm Why just, don't I'm you look, like it? Because I look at it, I'm like, this doesn't look cooked to me. Well, you're not an old man. I, I any, I'm 47 years old, okay. and I, when I went to culinary school in, in the mid-90s, I remember uh, they said, you know, hey, how do you want your steak? Well done. And this was my first week in school, and I just remember the gas from the chambers here of everybody going, what, really? You want to be a culinary student? You want to eat well done? Well, it's the way I was raised. You now need to go beyond what you have experienced, and now trust <laughs> me as a professional yeah. that I'm not going to kill you. Okay, All right. okay, that's fair. But I, I think I, I like the taste of, of like, no, if don't. I want something raw, I'm going to go get sushi. And well, I love sushi, so I'm going to eat raw fish. If you can eat raw fish, you can eat medium rare steak. Oh, it's so so, gross no, me. it's not. It's not. Stop saying that. I, I listen. Stop this. I, I, can we stop the interview right now? Wait, is this? Is this? Hurt? <laughs> <laughs> this hurts. Is this hurt? Yeah, I think it. You know what? For you as a young man, I honestly believe that you can be educated, and I believe that you can get to the next <laughs> There's level. There's hope for me. There's hope for you, but don't stick in that pattern or in that rut. That's you know, well done meat. It's very. It's it's not really pleasurable it's to tasty, eat. Man. It's not great on the palate. It's not. If you've tasted, I, I mean, I'm not asking you to have black and blue, okay? Which is just knock the antlers off and wipe the butt, uh, you know, <laughs> and put it on your plate. I'm not asking you to do that. Not yet. Okay. So, you okay. know, not yet. But you know, rare is great. And if it's the quality of the meat will predicate, uh, will determine whether you are to eat it at this level or to cook it all the way through. And there are certain cuts you have to have sort of cooked all the way through. Okay. Goat, I, you're not going to have medium rare goat. Right. And lamb, I'm not going to have. Am I? Oh, actually, of course I've, you can. I've seen, lamb, I've seen some lamb, lamb racks. The, the, the loin of any animal is generally tender. Less movement, it's just underneath the floating ribs. Uh, you know, and again, if you're looking at the skeletal breakdown, you should be able to determine which part of the meat you have to cook well done and which you can just have. 
at a rare or medium rare. I, I feel like I, I'm, a, I'm again in a master class right now of cuisine. And this is not the con- typical conversation we have, but I'm, I'm enjoying it because I'm learning. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm going to, again, listen to what you I know. <laughs> these I, golden know. nuggets that you give me. Medium well, <laughs> medium well, medium well. We know who you are. Shout out to uh, Richard Cazzo, who was the individual that uh, introduced us back in, I think, 06. I remember we had a lunch for like two hours, and I, I, I think there was another person there, but... I had, we had never met, but I only I only heard of you, and then I found out that you were you and Donovan Bailey were really were really close, um, and uh, I was like, oh okay, cool. It's like you guys were like of uh, like, you guys were like the Jedi's, like you guys were like <laughs> the dudes that laid down the foundation for idiots like me to come around and, and be and be able to float around on TV and stuff a little easier because you had, I mean, how long was was License to Grill on TV? Two thousand two, two thousand two to two thousand ten. Yeah, yeah, roughly, yeah. And uh, and um, and that was was it. It was shown in Canada, but it was predominantly shown in the United States, it was, right? It was in fifty to almost sixty different countries I, around, actually? The, around the world. Oh, I, that's you know, I, I get I get emails and I get Facebook requests from all over the place still, and it hasn't aired since two thousand ten on Food Network in Canada. Wow! So when you have you have you traveled to? Uh, other countries and people have recognized you, like like yeah, of outside of Canada or the United States, Singapore, Kuala Lumpur, really? Manila, Romania. I've been a l- into a lot of places based on that uh, that little venture, um, and and people outside of Canada are really sort of open to what we do here in Canada. What what what, what is it? Because we don't have like we don't have like a, a like a, d- a defined. Like cuisine, there's no like, uh, I mean, other than bacon and like maple syrup, there's nothing that's like inherently specifically Canadian. Because we are a multicultural society. I know, but so no, but we... I feel that's that's a Toronto thing. No, Toronto was very multicultural, but when you go to you go to Alberta, you go to Manitoba, Saskatchewan, it's not really it's maybe not diverse at all. Maybe, maybe Saskatchewan. Even but Vancouver, if you go Vancouver Alberta, is a little bit. Cal- Calgary's great. Vancouver no, is great. great towns, Halifax but... is great. You know, yes. Again, if you are part of what I do for a living, okay, you're able to go beneath the surface and find those little places that are multicultural. Like maybe when you're going at in what you see in the airport is all you know. <laughs> 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 shout out to the, shout out to the Manchu Walk. Um, every <laughs> every airport, every uh, food court. It's there's always there's a Manchu Walk. There's an A and W. Yeah. Uh, there's a there's a ju- there's some kind of juice. There's stand. something there for you. Yeah, whether it's Orange Julius or Dairy Queen, give me give me two more. The staples of the oh, uh, New York fries. New York fries. It's always the New York fries. You probably don't eat the food court like I do. I ate no. the food court like two days ago. No, no. Listen, I know you're in Boston. I know you're all over the place. Listen, I watch you. I'm I'm now just one of those voyeurs. Whatever, that says, man. Oh, I, I tell my kids, hey, I know that Whatever, guy. Man. Sure you do. Whatever. You don't know him. So when you um uh random question, you mentioned Jamaica. How much do you remember about the Jamaican bobsled team, Rob? The first one? Uh, well, yeah, yeah Sanka. I, I mean, I watched the movie. <laughs> <laughs> but, what do, but do you remember the actual, like, it's 1988, the Winter Games are in Calgary? I don't remember, like, I remember the movie, Cool yeah. Runnings, yeah. but I don't, and I remember, the, I think they fell in yes, they did, in one, one of the, the qualifying, qualifying runs. Yeah, I remember. And, and there's, like, the feel-good story of the Olympics, but I don't really remember much about the guys or their story other than what the movie told me which is probably 10 percent or 15 percent of their oh, actual truly lives. what happened yeah you're right I, I mean i don't think i could tell you their names yeah. you know but honestly it was a big deal um you know you're coming from uh, you know a hot country to, yes. to for bobsledding i mean i mean it's almost like equivalent to eddie the eagle you know from <laughs> you know from england there doing that ski jumping where you could actually kill yourself as well <laughs> so yeah you know i paid attention i have always i've always been a sports avid sports fan are, are you going to watch the Winter Olympics? Of course, I'm going to watch parts of it. I, I you know, I'm not. Does a, wifey make you watch uh, figure skating and like the ice dancing? I, I no. No, okay, no, okay. No, I got to put my foot down. <laughs> How many TVs do you have in your house? Because I heard that TVs are like, uh, yeah. if the, the the man can have his own TV in his own space, or the man cave, and the and the and the woman gets the rest of the house. Like the, the she's usually the. We have more than enough TVs in my house. <laughs> Everybody can watch what they want to watch. <laughs> Do you have a a man cave of sorts at your place? No, not no. Any, not anymore. I had a man cave, but it got invaded by enemy territory, and uh, <laughs> you know I, I lost it. I'm the only guy in my house, so I mean, are you? Yeah, so it's four girls, and uh, oh, you know, it's, dude, it's, yeah. 
I'm done. That means you were a you were a bad man back in the day. Well, well, um, I don't know about that part. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hallelujah, praise the Lord, pass the tea. Three girls. Wow, dude. Yeah, yeah. Just in my house at any particular time, but I have four daughters all day. Plus, I have a granddaughter. Uh, oh, sorry, know, four daughters. Excuse four me, daughters. my, my, my yeah, fault. Yeah, but you know, one's out of the house. Oh, okay. Know, the other one's leaving the house, and two at home. So it is what it is. Like you know, I I have I know who I am. I, I know well, why. So you must have as like how how many of your daughters could play the like the daddy's girl card to get what they wanted with you? All of them. All oh, <laughs> yeah, man, all you're just yeah, so you're just them. constantly like just either you're driving people or giving yeah. rides or you're just giving money for activity, sports, yeah. whatever they're interested in. Money yeah, just constantly flowing out of your pocket. Uh, you that's asked, why you have to have so many freaking jobs. You asked me what you know, what did you do this weekend? I was in Kitchener for part of it. Uh, I'm watching my youngest daughter play basketball in a tournament. Um, you know, and then I have practice with my older daughter, which I kind of coach a uh, assistant basketball coach, also Toronto triple threat my kids play basketball rep basketball so we have a lot of time where we are actually just on the road talking to each other going to games talking about games like my, our life really revolves around basketball you know me cooking and then playing basketball <laughs> how do you stay in shape Rob because I I've seen like there's like you know the, the the famous chefs like Gordon Ramsay and Jamie Oliver. They're pretty like they're not fat. They you know maybe have like a little daddy belly, but you're a pretty lean guy. And and my image of chefs, you've seen like the classic French or Italian chefs. Everybody has like a little bit of a pot belly. And certainly like on a lot of those food shows, you know people are. I mean I think a lot of those food shows are with Americans, so Americans are a little a little huskier because they're. You know, the portion sizes are, are bigger, bigger than bigger everywhere else in the world. But so, how do you keep your figure when you're in a kitchen for so long, and you just want you like sample, like right? You sample all day, like I very much monitor what goes in. So I'll do a lot of tasting as yeah. opposed to eating. So okay. if you're if you're gonna eat and chew and swallow everything that you put in your mouth as a chef, you are inherently going to gain weight. That's just the, the hazard of the job itself. Uh, what I do is I do a lot of tasting, um, spoons, chewing, but not truly swallowing it, just to get the flavor combination that I'm looking for. So every plate that goes out in my restaurant, I want to be aware of what's on that plate. I must be aware. That's my job as a chef is to know what's out there. So I monitor what I put in my mouth, and I, you know, I do a lot of walking. I'm, you know, forever on the bus. People like, you know, are you taking a bus? Yeah, I'm taking a bus. I take the bus yeah, too. I, did, I took a cab in the day. You took a cab. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah. yeah, it is what it is. So I just, I just make sure that I'm always physically. And plus, I told you, I also coach. So I'm, I do a little bit of running. Well, coaches, they, they yell. They don't. I yell. I yell a lot. pace along the. But I'm an assistant coach, so I, you know, <laughs> I'm one of those guys that has to do some work as well. You know, in terms of the laboring part, the head coach now can do the game planning and do all that stuff, and I'm out there physically manipulating the girls into into what they should be doing. So there's a little bit of sweating going on there as well. And, but and not I'm that much, though, so, Rob. To, to it's keep part your... of my day, but it's part of my... It's, okay. it's just part of the seven days that I have. Like, from Tuesday to Saturday, I'm at the restaurant, you know, from... 12 o'clock to 12 o'clock, and then on Mondays we have practice. Thursdays we have practice. Sundays I coach. Uh, it's like another CP. job for you. Yeah, well, it's it's not a job because it's a love. It's a passion. And, okay. I, and I want my children to experience what I experienced. I went to Eastern Commerce here in the mid Oh, did you actually? And you know what? It, it was a bit of a basketball powerhouse back in that time Still as is. well. Still is. Still uh, is. Listen, I give all the credit to all the kids. You know, Andrew Wiggins, all these kids that are doing what we hoped we could do. Yeah. These guys are living the dream. Now they have a, a real potential and there's an opportunity for them to be in the NBA since 1995 having the Raptors come here showed all these kids it wasn't a, a dream we had to watch games on tape delay you right. know NBA finals on tape delay it was done and we were watching it like please don't tell me anything you know I want to watch this so just seeing the evolution of where basketballs come to and come from to come to I'm happy with with what life has given me and my kids my little girls now I know the two the last two can get any scholarship to any place they want to go they're that good they're really good oh they're nice really good. wait is that just proud dad talking or are they actually uh, uh, you know what I, I I like empirical data I, you, know, <laughs> I, I, you know and we, we don't we don't we don't work on on accolades we work on hard work I like that my like... kids they, they work hard they're with me all the time uh, is it impossible for you when you go to another restaurant to turn your brain off are you you by that I mean 
are you constantly in, uh, evaluating everything? It's the, it's the the decor, it's the service, it's the table setting, it's the obviously it's the menu and the combination of of items if for the plate. Like, can you ever just uh, go into a restaurant as Joe Public, or do you try, or can you, or do you try to suppress that Never. when you go eat? I'm always always hyper- judging, always oh, evaluating. Uh, you know what? I'm not hypercritical in terms of wanting to tear down any cuisine. Um, what I'd like to do is just take a look. See uh, here, this is just. I know people can't see this, but this. I'm not going to mention the restaurant that I was at, but just, okay, so just go go right or left, whichever way. Rob you just go. Rob handed me his phone, and on his camera roll, we're looking at the kitchen. Okay, um, now this is the dining room. Some yeah. <clears throat> huge. They look like street lights, like old school street lights with big lamps. And then I guess that's, is that where they pay? Is that's that the way. Go back the other way because uh, that way would show you a little bit more of uh, what I was seeing while I was there. So you're t- so okay. So you see, there's like the sign restaurant. Yeah, okay, there's yeah. a huge kitchen with the open space. How did you get back there? Uh, every chef that kind of has an idea who I am will be just say, "Hey, come, come, just yeah, check." I'm going to take a picture anyway. You might as well let me in. <laughs> Actually, so wait, so when you, when people, and then, so, okay, so here's some photos of the food. Yeah. It looks tasty. Yeah. Some, I'm, I'm, I'm always evaluating because how can I do my job better? I mean, I, that's part of the deal is that I've got to go out to restaurants and to see what my competitors are doing and see what's new in the industry. They let you take pictures of their place, though. Whether it, listen, this is the new millennium. Everybody, and when they come into my restaurant, I see more flashes on the food before they eat it. Then I how do you feel about it. that? I love it because you? I dress those plates. That's me putting on my clothes in the morning, and okay. that's what I do for a living. So no plate's gonna go out messy, and if it did go out messy, it's gonna be on Instagram and Twitter, right. you know, in seconds. Yeah, I'm I'm 100 percent that guy where I post food pics and I, to the ire of my friends, and I'm so totally like you know, and I, before I I eat if I. If I'm like, okay, I ordered something I haven't taken a picture of, boom, there I am with my phone. I like to get I get like to get close to the food, like the low angle. Yeah. And I'm and I'm taking multiple shots because I want it to look cool on I'm Instagram. There. I'm there. And and I, I do like to give props to uh the restaurants uh and the, the, the cuisine that I enjoy. Um so you can't uh, as a, you can't go in as Joe Public. That no. looks pretty. That yeah, looks that's pretty my, good. that's my restaurant. So, so I'm are, looking at pictures of lamb shanks, which I was telling in, you a little in the about. pans. Yeah, searing them after I've smoked them. That's me out in the cold last week, minus 17. You, what, do you have like a grill or a barbecue? Outside? I have, a, I have a smoker outside. Then there's the smoking chips out there. I am listen. I'm part of the element. I love what I do. I told you, it doesn't matter if it's the dead of summer, if it's raining, or if it's sleeting or snowing. I'm the postman of food. <laughs> I'm out there. Have you ever, um, like, killed one of the animals that you've made? I've had an opportunity to uh, to do that a long Wait, time did, ago. Did you say yes or no? I said yes, yes, yes. Was I, it I, like a turkey? Uh, no. I, a pig I've seen, uh, but a duck. A duck? Yeah, chicken. Uh, and, and these are, I think, as a chef, it's kind of is it kind of scary? Like, no, if you haven't t- taken the life of something and used all of it to the best of its ability, I don't think you can call yourself a chef. Huh? You know, if, if food doesn't come wrapped in cellophane, it doesn't have styrofoam underneath it. It was living, it was breathing, it was there for a reason. I, I understand why vegetarians are vegetarians for maybe that ethical reason that they don't want to do this, but I know that I happen to be at the top of the food chain for a reason. <laughs> So, uh, so I'm gonna do what I have to do, um, you know. And I don't believe in wasting. So whatever I can utilize, I'm gonna utilize, and that's part of my my trade. How has your preparation changed with uh, sort of over the past like couple of years with the popularity of gluten free products or the gluten free movement? Well, it's changed drastically that I now have to keep some gluten-free pasta on, on PLAS at work just so just in case they come through the doors that I have to take care of them. But those types of situations, they need to be addressed well before you come to a restaurant. You need to make that phone call. You need to make okay. sure that people are aware of your allergies. Because if you're not, I mean, nobody's just going to carry that stuff for the sake of carrying it. It's part of your carrying cost. So if I'm not going to have a customer that comes in with that allergy, it's just going to sit on my shelf, so I'm going to pay just in case. Let me know. I'll do whatever it takes to accommodate those types of people. But what if, but what if you have people coming in from, like, out of town? And, and, and I don't know if a lot of people plan 
their dinners. I'm not sure. I'm sure there are some people out there in the audience that do plan their dinners. Okay, I'm going to go out to dinner on Friday night or Saturday night or whatever, and I'm playing on Tuesday. But I fe- but me being super spontaneous, and I can only speak for me, I guess, and other people that are like me, um, We I just, you know, on the day, like, oh, I heard this restaurant's cool, or I haven't tried this, or I'm going to go back to one of my favorites. Um, and if I bring someone that... Uh, has this food allergy. I'm not sure if I'm thinking, oh, yeah, let me make a call. I just, I kind of assume now that most restaurants can accommodate these well, people just by them. Okay. Chain restaurants, yeah, for sure, because that's part of their plan. But you're talking about a privately owned business that sets a menu. I set a menu. Um, so, and if people come in and they want to mix and match my menu, you know, I, I'm a little adverse to it on some level, but if you're gluten-free, it doesn't mean you can't have a piece of meat, fish, fish or chicken, right. right? And so I don't serve any starch with that. So I give you all green vegetables with that. Maybe I give you a salad to, com- you know, to combat what else is missing from that plate. And I just, you know, as, as a chef and a person who has done all the hard work in my restaurant, I know what goes into everything. So when you ask the question, I can answer those questions. A lot of people cannot answer that question. I have more questions. You have as many do, as you want. Do you, do you have answers? I, I may. If I don't, I'll Google it. <laughs> I was reading in uh, Toronto Life just just last night that um, it uh, the the new uh, what do they say? Uh, uh, just let me just read this one little part. Um, According to food prognosticators, cauliflower is going to be the hot vegetable of 2014. Uh, there's a restaurant called Yours Truly here in Toronto. Uh, it's, in, uh, uh, it's an ambitious tasting restaurant on the Ossington Strip. Uh, they said um, they're going to turn vegetable into culinary art um, by uh, changing it into three different forms. Uh, a wobbly brick of mousse seasoned with earthly kombu dashi. I don't know what that means. Sweet caramelized florets. And a crisp and crispy chips that peak like bare trees out of an edible landscape, and of a uh, briny black olive soil. Kelp and kombu is just seaweed, my friend. It, it's not a huge thing. I, I I've been using cauliflower for years. I mean, you know, I've written a couple cookbooks already. Yes, yeah, shout out yeah. to uh, uh, Born, Born to, to Grill. Grill. Yeah, Born to Grill is my last cookbook out. Uh, yeah, I love cauliflower, but again, for me to be on like I, whatever is cutting edge. I'm probably not going to be there because or like uh, trendy trendy i'm not going to be there I, I'll, I'll try my best but i'm not really i'm about putting out what's in my heart okay uh, and at this point i think i've earned the right to put out what i do best as opposed to me reacting to what other people want uh now i remember we're in the service industry so we are here to serve people so if i get enough people who are asking for something i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to do that and now if i'm not good at what they're asking me to do i will get better at it but That's how do you funny. actually know, though? Like, are your servers going to be like, hey, this person's asking for this? Like, how do you? Yeah, they come back. They give me all the requests. The, when we have any requests, special requests in the restaurant, the server is, is indicated to come see chef. <laughs> I will say yay or nay. If I can do it, if I can do it, I will do it. If I cannot do it, then equally I have to say that as well. Now, remember, if you're in a busy restaurant and somebody comes in at 10.59 and you've been in service since 5.30 and they ask for something and you're out of it, you're allowed to say you're out of it, but at 5.30 when you open, you can't be going to somebody saying, ah, listen, we're out of this, we're out of this, and we're out of this, and you can have that. That's not part of the deal. So part of the service thing is to know what you have, tell the service to get out there, try to sell what we have, and lean the customer towards kind of what is, you know, our specialties. Work with that. But everything that I have is on that's on my menu, I serve. How, how much are you influenced by trends in the... Like the marketplace, like I, I felt like a couple of years ago in Toronto, all these like boutique like burger joints opened up, and like now, or not now, but I've noticed recently a few more like Mexican kind of spots have opened up. I know your 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 restaurants more fr- like uh, French, and and you said there's some bar like an element of barbecue to it. Um, maybe it's like a summertime thing. Do you ever do you guys do those special menus? Like okay, yes. this this. Uh, this food item is is pretty popular. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll offer that at our place just because we do this that. this trend is is well. What's seasonal? This food item is trending. It's really about what's seasonal. Okay. It's what is available to you. And if you're trying to work out of season, you're going to be spending out of pocket an inordinate amount of money. So if it's it behooves you as a chef to know what's in season and to work with that. Um, in the summertime, yeah, we change our menu all the time because we have special events at our place. We do a lot of corporate gigs, so. 
we will tailor a menu based around the corporate gig. Mike Holmes was just in for his 10th anniversary last year. Uh, George Strombolopoulos dropped by. He is now vegan. Uh, I had right. to I had to make him a special meal. Um, <clears throat> then Mike Holmes came back again for his Christmas party. Just at uh, in, I think I saw that on Twitter. I think either the, you Instagrammed it or you yeah, said, I did both. I did both. I, I so you know we tailored everything around what he wanted. He says, well, I want some big cuts of meat. That's, that's what that's Mike what Holmes wanted? Yeah, yeah, and we give him what he wants. This, he's a good man. We started in television at the same time. We did our media training down at the, uh, you know, Alliance back in the oh, day. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, so it was kind of interesting just to see the evolution of all these people, where they are now, who's doing what, and, you know, who's more famous, who's less famous, who's working at becoming famous. You know, it is what it is. I, I love my life. On, on Twitter, it's at Chef Rob Rainford, and on Instagram, it's at Chef underscore Rainford. Uh, Born, Born to Grill is one of your books. I haven't, uh, I haven't picked it up. I got to get your copy. Then. I, I do have to, I do have to get, but I don't, like, I'm not a big recipe guy, because, you know, me, as a, as a, sing, a bachelor uh, living in a one-bedroom place, uh, take out. I do a lot of take and I do a lot of reheating. Re <laughs> so I'm one of those dudes. I'll go to like Loblaws or go to the Metro and I'll buy like that whole chicken for 11 bucks and then cut that up and just boil or steam some broccoli and maybe some brown rice. That's kind of the extent of my kitchen, my really? cooking. Really? Wow. It's hard. It's so hard to hear this. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good for you because you're a restaurateur, so I can I eat out a lot, and I'll go and I'll. But you yet know, you haven't come to my restaurant yet. You're right. right I do. That, I do need to get to Gossip Restaurant. Right, there you go. I will. There I will get there, there you go. for sure. And if you're not there, I'm going to be pretty upset. No, no, no. Well, we uh, communicate uh, via right. outside of the, the the social media. Like yes. I, I figure, if you have a person's real phone number, <laughs> you're you're buddies. Then you're actually friends. <laughs> you're, yes. you're friends. You're real. Um. Lastly, I'll uh, I'll get you out of here on this. Uh, who do you have? as your Super Bowl pick, the Denver Broncos or the Seattle Seahawks? You know what? I, I got to go with the old school, man. I gotta what does go the old school mean? Well, to me, you know what? Denver and, and Manning and, and what he's come because back he's from. Because he's old? Uh, because, you know what? Experience means something. Uh, I Listen, I love, uh, you know, I love Seattle as well. Like you, you're talking about two teams that are, are equally matched in my eyes. Yeah, the, the line, matched. the betting line is pretty close. Oh, actually. yeah. I, you, can't, pick game. you can't just, but, it's a sentimental type of pick you've got to make. At really? some point at some point. I mean, this is like the Miami last year. You know, I, I gotta I had to go with the old boys. With the I had Spurs. To. I had to. In the finals. I had to. And only I because was, Tim Duncan is like your age? Uh, he's not my age. Yeah, he's much <laughs> younger. He's still much younger. I I I still but I like a group of experience. I with Miami I didn't understand that uh, this collective these three guys could just sort of collude and say you know i want to play with you you want to play with me all right let's just go like, let's leave our respective teams like let's not go to cleveland let's go somewhere hot like come on i don't believe that was the the best idea yeah but they for won the league but yeah, they, they won. won they won they won twice and they've been and in I, the finals every year that they've been assembled and, and they'll I probably believe, go this year and i believe they'll probably get back there again but if they're going against the spurs again i'm picking the spurs <laughs> 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 and i'm picking denver so you're going with denver you're I'm going, going with Peyton Manning, yeah. who is yeah. arguably, actually, it's hard to make that argument that he's not the greatest quarterback of all time. Uh, and they have the record, the greatest offense of all time. They set, Peyton Manning set passing records, and their team scored the most points in the history of the NFL. So it'll be hard. It's going to be, I hope it's a, a close game. I, I mean, so Seattle has the best defense in the league, and they're playing in a cold weather environment in, uh, I think it's I think it's now called MetLife Stadium in, in New uh, York, right? In uh, New York, out there in the suburbs of New Jersey. So it'll be uh, it'll it's be gonna be a great game, and it doesn't matter to me at this point in my life. I don't give a hoot who wins. Tell you the <laughs> truth, but if you ask me who I was picking, I had to. I'm, I'm gonna pick them. Are you gonna make a uh, like? Are you gonna make a Super Bowl? Oh, we got wings and things in my place. Onion rings. We got fry. We got a typical Super Bowl. We have a ritual in our home all the time. Any any finals. Yo, my deep fryer is a uh, pumping, <laughs> you know, <laughs> homemade onion rings, you know, battered and dipped and fried. And, you know, we got our ketchup. We just do it plain fair. And I do have a little salad for those people who want salad, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but that's I, what we do. I might have to I might have to hit you up. That sounds absolutely delicious. Uh, Chef Rob Rainford again once on Twitter. It's at Chef Rob Rainford on Instagram. It's at under it's at Chef underscore Rainford. Uh, he 
uh, runs a restaurant called Gossip here in Serrano and also teaching at George Brown. Yes. And you can see him uh, randomly all all across southwestern Ontario at various basketball tournaments. His little girls are playing, and he's the coach that's actually running up and down the sidelines with no, the girls. No, I have to sit down. Girls. I'm the assistant coach. I can't stand up. You can't stand up, right? <laughs> Do you have a whistle? <laughs> no, I have a whistle. For, I, no, no. I, in practice, I have my whistle. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for stopping by, man. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Cabbie Presents, the podcast. 